تؤدي النجمة البريطانية روزمان بايك في فيلمها الأخير حرب خاصة دور مراسلة الحرب الأمريكية ماري كولفين التي كانت من أوائل الصحفيين الذين لقوا حتفهم في سوريا في فبراير 2012 وجاء مقتلها في قصف للقوات الحكومية لحي بابا عمرو في حمص بعد ساعات قليلة من ظهورها على شبكة سي ان ان لتكشف عن بشاعة ما كان يحدث هناك قبل أيام من وفاتها عبرت قوفنا الحدود اللبنانية السورية ووصلت إلى حمص بشكل غير قانوني لأن الحكومة السورية لم تكن تسمح للصحفيين بتغطية الصراع هناك ومع احتدام القصف حتى هم سؤول صحيفة السندي تانز البريطانية التي كانت تعمل لحسابها على الخروج من سوريا لكنها أصرت على البقاء مع المواطنين السوريين في الملجأ لحمايتهم فقتلت مع العشرات منهم ولكن تقارير عدة زعمت أن الصاروخ السوري الذي ضرب الملجأ كان يستهدفها You know, Marie had had great successes earlier in her career, you know, in East Timor. Her decision to stay with people who were trapped in a UN compound definitely trained, changed the course of that event and the UN who were preparing to evacuate and abandon these people to probably certain death from the militia. Once she stayed, the UN reversed their decision and didn't, didn't leave that compound. So she felt that her presence, you know, made a, made a difference. And I think she believed that in putting out that broadcast that she did with CNN, you know, she knew that the, that the narrative coming out of Syria at that time was the army is quelling terrorist gangs. And she said, that is not what is going on. There are no terrorist gangs here. I am surrounded by a city of cold, starving civilians. And if she hadn't spoken those words on Anderson Cooper's show, many would have believed the other narrative. منذ أن التحقت كولفين بالساندي تايمز عام 1985 كمراسلة حرب قامت بتغطية صراعات في الشرق الأوسط وخارجه من الخطوط الأمامية مخاطرة بحياتها وأجرت مقابلات حصرية مع زعماء عرب ورغم فقدانها لعينها اليسرى عام 2001 خلال تغطيتها لتمرد مسلحي التاميل في سريلانكا إلا أنها استمرت في تغطية أخطر صراعات العالم كأفغانستان وليبيا والعراق وسوريا. After losing her eye, she went back to the battlefield. Well, I think, yeah. What do you think was driving her? She felt alive. You know, you. What was it? They say that, you know, death is all around. Was she escaping something from her personal life? 100%. I mean, I think in some ways it's a story of an addict. It's a story of addiction. It's a story of a, a need to be out there, you know, there's a, there's a pull back to the very place that scares you. And she wasn't also immune to the fact that it gave her a certain swagger. She knew that Marie Colvin, the phenomenon, would, would only be enhanced by the loss of the eye. I think the eye patch gave her a kind of roguish quality. It certainly, you know, it was like a shorthand for, for danger. إنجازات ماري حققت لها أهم جوائز الصحافة العالمية. ولكنها ايضا حرمتها من الاستقرار ومن بناء عائله لها maybe i would have liked a more normal life maybe i just don't know how was she happy do you think because she came across as a tormented person she was a woman of extremes she had you know she was a hugely entertaining friend but underneath that yes the the job has cost when she was treated for ptsd and i think she thought she wasn't really a candidate for that. When she went into hospital, the doctor who treated her said, you know, Marie, I I I've treated veterans, you know, soldiers who have not seen as much combat as you've seen. 12-year-old Palestinian girl killed by a stray bullet that pierced her heart. I watched her parents hold her as she bled out. She was wearing pearl earrings. She probably thought she looked pretty that day. I see it. So you don't have to. How much had you known about those tragedies that she was witnessing? No one can prepare you, I think, for the truth of war. I mean, I've now seen images that I wish I could erase from my mind because in order to go and convey what she saw, I have had to see images that are the things that never make the papers. And they're horrific. War is so much more violent than anything that I've ever seen on film or ima even imagined probably. كانت ماري قد صرحت أنها شاهدت في سوريا أبشع مشاهد لحرب 
لهذا ركز مخرج الفيلم ماثيو هايمن على أحداث الصراع في سوريا مستخدم اللاجئين السوريين من الأردن للقيام بأدوارهم ليقترب قدر المستطاع لما شاهدته كولفين من ويلات في حمص ماري شاهد بيبي دائما من gunshot wounds and we had our own baby and our own father and the man who played the father was a Syrian man from Homs whose best friend's two-year-old had been shot off his shoulders by a sniper and, and this man when he came in and saw this child on the bed the, the, the grief that erupted from this man was almost impossible to bear to be in, a, in the presence of I found it it was incredibly painful and um, profound your human instinct is to walk away and give someone space and yet your obligation is to capture the truth on film. So I think the interesting thing about this film is that most of the reactions, most of the moments, they, they would never be repeated. We had one chance to get most of it because, you know, real stuff, real feeling doesn't, you know, it wells up in a torrent and if you miss it, you miss it. حرب خاصة هو فيلم روزموند الثالث الذي يتناول صراعات في الشرق الأوسط هذا العام. الأول كان بيروت الذي لعبت فيه دورة عميلة CIA سافرت إلى بيروت لتحرير زميلها من قبضة مجموعة فلسطينية وفيلم عن تيبي الذي تجسد فيه دورة ألمانية ثورية تشترك مع مجموعة فلسطينية في اختطاف طائرة متجهة إلى تل أبيب وتوجيهها إلى عن تيبي عام 1976 After making all these movies Do you feel that you have a better or a deeper understanding of Middle Eastern conflicts? Constantly, I'm constantly learning and I, I also spent time in preparation for this movie uh, traveling in Lebanon um, because I went to work with MAG, um, the mine advisory group, um, to go into areas of Lebanon that people don't normally get to go because I felt it might be give me an insight into you know, being close to, a, to danger. We went into minefields and I watched the deminers at their work and saw the contaminated land as the, res that is the direct result of war. Um, spent a long time in cars discussing all the very delicate, complicated politics of that region. So I don't think you can fully ever feel an expert unless it's in your bones, I think. I had a teacher too, I mean, it's nice to go back to school. I had a very, uh, I had a Middle East, um, Middle Eastern advisor actually, he came to my house. I mean, that was off my own bat. When you are dealing with a subject so controversial like Entebbe, do you end up having debates? Of course, and especially with a film like Entebbe where the cast was very international. You know, we had, we had Palestinians, we had Israelis, we had French, we had Germans, we had made directed by a Brazilian written by a Scot. <laughs> As an actor, you're fulfilling the director's vision, and his vision was to, was to just explore what happens when people who are in positions of power come under tremendous pressure. Well, Beirut, on the other hand, was told from a Hollywoodic perspective, yeah. with all the stereotypes about the Middle East. Yes, Beirut is a, is a, is, is, is a fiction. It feels as you, as you felt, which is for some people a good thing, for some people a bad thing. It felt like a sort of Hollywood thriller that no one was, you know, didn't have the emotional guts. I want things to feel that they do have emotional guts and I think that's why this film it feels like it stirs people and it um, and it feels that it's relevant and current although you know Marie's life ends at the very f beginning of the Syrian conflict you know it puts the spotlight firmly back on Syria just at this crucial time in developments and also on journalism and I think those are the two big things that make you feel it's worth it. حققت روزمان شهرتها عندما لعبت دور فتاة بوند في مت في يوم آخر عام 2002 واستمرت في أداء أدوار نسائية قوية أبرزها إيمي دون في فيلم الزوجة المفقودة الذي نال لها ترشيحا لأوسكار أفضل ممثلة عام 2014 Are you on a mission to tell the stories of these heroic women who make a difference to the world or you just it happens that you get these roles. I don't feel I'm on a mission. I, I, I'm, I'm attracted to courage, very attracted to courage. I'm attracted to people who take a stand. I'm attracted to people who, who pay a personal price for, for what they believe in. وذلك لأنه يطرح ما أرادت أن تحققه من خلال تسليط الضوء على ويلات الحروب وضحاياها من منظورها 
السؤال هل الجماهير مستعدة لمواجهة هذه المشاهد المروعة؟ حسام عاصي بي بي سي